We meet in God's name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Thank you very much. Good morning and welcome to our service, which is to mark the Tuesday after the 15th Sunday after Trinity. You're very, very welcome here this morning as we gather to worship God in spirit and in truth. We celebrate this Mass to the praise and glory of God. And we also spend some time, having heard the readings this morning, thinking about who is Jesus and how do we relate to him. And so as we think that through, let us ask God to bless our time together by saying together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. My sisters and brothers, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and in sacrament, let us sit or kneel and call to mind and confess our sins. In the midst of confusion and doubt, we find your grace, O God, and discover your eternal love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. There is none but you to uphold our cause when our sin cries out and our guilt is great. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Reach out to us, O God, and we shall be healed. Restore us, and we shall sing your praise. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so to the colic for this, the week of the 15th Sunday after Trinity, let us pray. O God, who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love, grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel, but always abiding in you, they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. We attend to the reading. A reading from the book Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, says the teacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What do people gain from all the toil at which they toil under the sun? A generation goes, and a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises, and the sun goes down, and hurries to the place where it rises. The wind blows to the south, and goes round to the north. Round and round goes the wind, and on its circuits the wind returns. All streams run to the sea, but the sea is not full. To the place where the streams flow, there they continue to flow. All things are wearisome more than one can express. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, or the ear filled with hearing. What has been is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done. There is nothing new under the sun. Is there a thing of which it is said, See, this is new? It has already been, 
in the ages before them. The people of long ago are not remembered, nor will there be any remembrance of people yet to come by those who come after them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. O Lord, you you have have been been our our refuge refuge from from one one generation generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the earth and the world were formed, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. You turn us back to dust and say, Turn back, O children of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday, which passes like a watch in the night. O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. You sweep them away like a dream. They fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withers. O Lord, you you have have been our refuge from one generation to another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in God's name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Gosh, what a short Gospel reading today, and yet one which asks that fundamental question, Who is he? Who is Jesus? You know, we are so used to the clear terms about Jesus, which we have grown up with, that we don't realise how hard it was for his contemporaries to figure him out. We have the pleasure and the, the privilege of reading about Jesus. We've known about him probably since we were young. So we have a very informed and very sophisticated idea in our own minds about who we think he is. They were meeting Jesus for the first time. We call him Son of God, Saviour, Redeemer, Lord, Messiah. 
christ yet you know it took christians several centuries to hammer out agreement on these titles and these descriptions luke's gospel and the other gospels show us the difficulty people around him had in figuring out who jesus was just who was this man in today's gospel we hear of herod's puzzle but he wasn't the only one the gospels also show us the difficulties his closest disciples had in as we say figuring him out we know from recent gospels how peter had difficulty understanding who he was and we know james and john were very confused about what he taught and how he was speaking Surely we benefit, therefore, from the struggles and the work of our predecessors, our ancestors, as it were, in the faith, with respect to who Jesus truly is. But we do need to continue our search, even. We need to struggle in the sense that we need to try to comprehend what the meaning is for us in calling Jesus our Lord, our Saviour, the Son of God, the Messiah. What do we mean? And more particularly, what does Jesus especially mean to us in our lives today? How do we think of him? And what do we consider to be important? For how we think of him may vary from time to time in our lives, depending on our current circumstances. For what do we look in him? What do we expect from him? When do we especially seek his help? These are all things which are worth pondering, things which are worth chewing over. For how we relate to Jesus is really important, and how we actually relate to him is fundamental in how we keep our ears open to what he is trying to say to us. It's especially useful, I think, to think about these questions as we come to the altar in Holy Communion, as we are united to God and each other in Holy Communion with the body and the blood of Christ, we might spend some time reflecting on how we think of him there. Perhaps he's primarily our friend, our hope, our strength, our judge, our joy, our consolation, our Lord, our faith. Perhaps he's one of those particularly Day to you, or perhaps his many of those titles all rolled up into one. We're never going to fully understand or know who Christ is to any one of us, but we can be grateful for his presence, and we can be grateful almost for him nagging at us, saying, Who do you say I am this day? Most of all, let us just be grateful for his presence in our lives. We need sometimes almost to leave the words to our hearts to see and to understand. To God be the glory of Christ in our lives. Amen. Amen. And so let us move to our prayers of intercession. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, we pray to the Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the presence of Jesus Christ in our lives, and as we pray to you through him, offering our lives alongside his, so we ask you to bless us with a greater understanding of who Jesus Christ is to us, asking that we may fully come to understand what this means to us and to our lives. We pray that your church Will continue to understand and sophisticate its interpretation of Jesus's presence in all our lives. We pray for Justin, our Archbishop, for Christopher and Richard, our Bishop. And we pray for the churches in this local area of Mitcham, particularly praying for the Anglican churches of St Barnabas, St Mark's, St Olaf and this parish church. We remember St. Catherine's Church in Kingsdale, in Matabelia, our prayer partner parish. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for the world. And we think today especially about all of those nations suffering from the problems of COVID-19. We pray your blessing on all those key workers. We pray your blessing on the caring professions, on the medical profession, on the nursing profession. We give thanks for the loving care that people receive and we pray for those who have to go without because of economic disadvantage. We pray for the peace of the world at this time of turmoil, at this time of uncertainty. And we pray for nations particularly who are going through election processes, either looking forward to them or looking retrospectively. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those who are sick or suffering at this time. We bring before you those in a moment of silence who we carry in our own heart this day. Be with them in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. We pray for those whose years mind falls about this time. Rest eternal, grant them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as we pray for ourselves, we ask that you will help us to continue to ask those questions about who Christ is and what he means to us in our lives as Christians. Give us the intellectual ability, the keenness, the willingness and the enthusiasm to study and to listen and to learn more and more about our Lord Jesus Christ day by day. For we know that in the abundance of your love, we will ever grow closer to him the more we seek him out. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Will you please stand for the peace? We are the body of Christ in the one spirit. We were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of that peace.
Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, O God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Through the divine work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise for your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things. He was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms to us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will, and won for you a holy future. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that according to your holy word, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and the blood of your Son and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Who, in the night before he died, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Same way after supper, he took the cup again, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. And so far as according to mine, his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Mary, the Mother of God, Peter, Paul, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And 
lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one of them. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Behold, Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. But only say the word, and I shall be healed. us, O Lord, your church, with your perpetual mercy, and because without you our human frailty cannot but fall, keep us ever, by your help, from all things hurtful, and lead us to all things profitable to our salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise. When we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us hope. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and the love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of